Hey everybody, how's it going? It's the Daily Shooter, and today we're going to be taking a look at my choice for the best Trijicon MRO. As you guys know, there's a lot of different models out there, a lot of different variations. There's also a lot of different price points, so that's something to consider as well. But my choice for the best MRO is going to be the MRO Patrol, so that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Now, before we get started in full transparency, this optic was sent to the channel by Optics Planet. They don't care what I say about it, but they did send it out for me to try. So with that being said, you can use my discount code, which is daily. If you guys want links and other discount codes, stuff like that, always check out my website. My website will be linked down below. So I'll put the link directly to this over there since I can't post it here on YouTube. So again, use that discount code daily over to Optics Planet and save yourself a little bit of money. Now, like I was saying before, there's several different models of the Trijicon MRO. You have the original MRO, you have the MRO 2.0, you have the MRO HD, and you have the MRO Patrol, which is what you're looking at right here. Now, with each one, you're going to find different features. However, with the MRO Patrol, you're going to find the most features. But also keep in mind that you're going to find different price points between the MROs as well. And uh, that matters to people that are on a budget. So if you're on a budget and you're having a hard time maybe affording something that costs $100, $150 more, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with going with uh, an MRO 2.0, which is still going to run you sub $500. So if you're on a budget, you've saved up your money, and uh, you're looking at an MRO 2.0, I don't think you're going to have a problem with that at all. They're great optics. They have a lot to offer. They're really, really tough, and they've been around for long enough now where you know people have been able to use them and abuse them and then give their feedback. So there's nothing wrong with any of the models. This video is simply based on what I think is the best, and this one right here has the most features features and I think you get the best bang for your buck as well because with some of the other MROs like the HD and the 2.0 there's different mounting options and their aftermarket mounts that have been put on uh, at the factory and they're sold at different price points and they can get really expensive I mean I've seen an MRO 2.0 with uh, I think it was an ADM mount on it and that went for over a thousand dollars almost eleven hundred dollars and most of that was because of the mount. This one right here gives you a really nice mount and gives you a bunch of different features, but still comes in you know, just over that $600 price point. Uh, there is a model of the Patrol that will put you over 700 bucks, but still that's well under $1,000 and you get a great mount that is kind of semi-quick disconnect. So again, we're gonna take a look at the features and what you get with the MRO Patrol. Uh, pretty cool little optic here that has a lot to offer, so let's talk about it. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and talk about materials. Now, when you're talking about Trijicon, you're usually talking about a pretty tough optic. This thing's made out of 7075 aluminum. It is a forged housing. So the housing on this is a forged 7075, and then you have a milled 7075 for the mount itself. So both very strong. They didn't go with a 7075 T6 up top, and then maybe go down to a 6061 for the mount. Both very tough materials. They're gonna last you for a long time. They're both type three hard anodized mill spec coatings so again very strong coatings and with it comes to or when it comes to Trijicon coatings Trijicon coatings are very very nice uh, I've seen some people Cerakote their MROs I've seen people Cerakote uh, their ACOGs and it takes a long time in the sandblaster to be able to get that coating off. Uh, I've seen other companies out there that put a, a hard anodized coating on their product, and then you put it in the blaster to be able to, you know, Cerakote it and get it down to the strip bare metal, and uh, it just comes off like butter. With the MROs, that's not the case. This is a very nice, very strong coating. But one thing to consider with this MRO versus the other MROs is that the body is not going to be the same as let's say an HD or a 2.0. The body is actually a little bit different. There is extra material and extra inserts and things like that in the very back and in the very front, which we'll take a look at here in just a second as well. So uh, it is a different housing style than a traditional MRO. Now, like I said before, this has a semi-quick disconnect mount. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't have like a standard or traditional quick disconnect lever that you would find. Uh, you know, you just flip off and this whole thing comes off. The way that this thing works is it has uh, this bolt on it, or I guess it's kind of more or less a nut. But you have this on here that allows you to spin this thing down, tighten it down, and then once you have it tight, it's set in place, right? All you have to do is simply spin this, and you can do it with your fingers, and it will lock on there nice and tight. But you spin this to the desired location, and then you go ahead and you push on it, and it allows that bottom to open up. So you can see that it's spring-loaded right there, bring it to its complete open position, 
and it opens up like that you can take it off the rail and then when you close it down it doesn't allow it to push in anymore so this thing's not going anywhere it locks on there nice and tight they use a three bar design on this one which is a little bit different than a lot of others as well so typically on a mount like this you're going to see either a center bar or maybe two bars on the side that are going to index with your rail uh, and that allows for you know a good re-zero if you have two bars uh, one bar is kind of iffy to me but having three means that it's going to line up nice and tight you should be able to re-zero this thing pretty easy again when you want this thing off all you have to do is simply spin that thing open push down on it and it's going to pop right off so it's to me semi quick disconnect it's not a, compl a complete quick disconnect mount however it does have some really nice uh skeletonized uh you know skelet hmm I don't know if I would say skeletonizing. I don't think that's a word, but you know what I mean? It's nicely skeletonized. How's that? So there's a lot of material that's been removed. It's a fairly lightweight mount, comes in at under two ounces. And uh, with that mat material removed right there, that definitely helps out with that. Uh, this optic with the mount on and all of the accessories, the caps and stuff like that, I think the whole setup is still coming in at maybe around seven ounces. So it's, it's not too bad given the fact that it is a little bit larger than the traditional MRO. Now, things that are similar to a traditional MRO are going to be the battery cap, which is located right up here next to the turn dial for your brightness settings. All you have to do is put a coin or a screwdriver, something like that in there. Go ahead and pop off that cap and you're going to find a CR2032 battery. That's going to give you up to five years of battery life. Now, the five years of battery life is calculated off of setting three, which is a daytime bright setting. But for me, out in the desert, when I typically go shooting in the day, I usually turn this thing all the way up to the top. However, you don't have to do that. I would say uh, maybe setting five would work just fine if you're out there and uh, you want to conserve battery life. However, you know, with a five year battery at setting three, it is going to cut it down a little bit when you turn the brightness level up, but not all that much. Uh, if you change out your batteries every year or two years, you'll never have to worry about it. Plus the fact that these batteries are much more common now, uh, easy to replace, it's, it just doesn't make sense to try and push the battery all the way to the, the manufacturer limits or something like that. Just simply change out the battery every year or two. You'll be just fine. You don't have to worry about battery life. So uh, five years is still pretty good at setting number three. And this does have multiple settings. You'll see the dial that goes all the way around here. Uh, the nice thing about having the dial on the top, oh, by the way, there are a total of six settings. So you'll see the six setting right there. Uh, the nice thing about having the dial on the top on this optic right here is that it's totally ambidextrous. So unlike, let's say, an aim point or other optics that mount the dial on the side, this one being on top means that whether you're a righty or lefty or maybe you're just you know holding the, uh, the grip with your right hand or left hand or you're just kind of looking around a wall and you want to change the setting, something like that, doesn't matter. You can use right or left hand, just reach up to the top and change your settings and you're good to go. So it's got that nice ambidextrous dial on the top. Now this does have some night vision settings as well. So you're going to find uh, a couple different night vision settings and a couple nighttime settings. So you have two different night vision settings that are located right there. You see a large N and a small N, and uh, then you'll see one and two. So the large N, small N, good for night vision. And then the one and two are good for, let's say, home defense. Okay, so if you're going to be using this for home defense and you want to be able to see it at nighttime without it being too bright, then you could go to settings one, two. Uh, there's a little dot right there, and then you have uh, also have settings three, and then it goes all the way up to six. Uh, the nice thing about this optic right here is that there's that little point in the middle right there that kind of tells you kind of where you're at, and you can read that on the dial in the back. So when you're looking at the back of this thing, you can kind of see where you are. Right now it's set to off, and then without you know having to move my head away from it too much, I can see exactly where I'm at. Just by turning this dial right here, you can see that I'm at two, and then I'm at the uh, in-between point right here. Daytime settings, three, four, five, six, and it's also very, very fast. Now I have it zoomed in, so I'm sorry for kind of shaking around a little bit so you guys can see this, but it's also very fast because unlike pressing a bunch of buttons or, you know, moving around a, a, you know, a plus minus or something like that, all you have to do if you want to change this down, it just takes a second to be able to go all the way down to the off position. So uh, it's very, very fast as well. Now, when it comes to the turrets, those are going to be the same as your tra traditional MRO as well. Uh, and one of my favorite features about this optic is the fact that there's no caps on the turret, which means that you can make adjustments without worrying about losing caps, tethered caps, or anything else. Simply make your adjustment and you're good to go. You can use a screwdriver, you can use uh, the back of a shell or the back of a case or whatever you want. You can go ahead and make quick adjustments and it's going to retain 
uh, the ability to be waterproof. So some optics out there uh, will lose the ability to be waterproof if you lose the caps, because there are uh, typically O-rings uh, that are located right, be, uh, right below the turret. So if you take off the cap, you'll see a little black O-ring. And if there's no pressure on that O-ring, that means that water can get into that seal. You don't have to worry about that with this. If you lose your cap, uh, there is no cap, but what I'm saying is if you were to lose your cap, it's still going to be waterproof uh, regardless. So I think that's kind of a nice feature and it kind of helps with the profile too. There's not this big cap that's sticking up off the top right here. Uh, it's going to be half MOA adjustment. So that's approximately a half inch and hundred yards, uh, half MOA adjustments. I'm not really sure how many MOA there are up and down, so how many total MOA there are, but you'll see that we have uh, another adjustment knob on the side right here, and pretty much the same thing, you know, no caps, just easy to use, easy to access turrets, and uh, does have a lot of buildup of that 7075 aluminum, that forging around the turret, so it is a completely protected turret. Now, another thing you're going to notice about the MRO Patrol is that it's a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than the original MRO, but those downsides come with some added benefits as well. So the original MRO, the body goes from about here to about here. So it's definitely smaller and lighter, but with the MRO Patrol, there are some added features that are permanently affixed that kind of set the glass further back. And these are also going to be 7075 T6 aluminum features. So on the front right here, you can see it's a little bit longer. So with the original MRO, the, uh, end of the housing is right here but the glass is also right here as well now the glass is set back a little bit from the end of the original MRO so you do have some protection with the housing right here but with the MRO patrol being stretched out a little bit further it puts that glass a little bit further back meaning that you're gonna have that added protection with the extra aluminum body sticking out further from the glass it's gonna be the same on the back end as well there's a permanently attached feature on the back right here that's gonna set the glass further inside with the original MRO or the traditional MRO, the glass is just about towards the end of the housing, and so there's not really all that much protection for this particular lens. So with this one, it's going to be a little bit better, uh, you know, as far as protection goes, because it is set back. I'll see if I can show you guys that. So again, with the original MRO, the glass comes pretty much to the back right here. But with this one, you can see that the glass is recessed in there quite a bit more. And that's because of the addition that they put in the back right here that has the threads on it. I'll see if I can show you guys a little bit better with some different camera angles. But uh, the glass is going to be set back and that's going to protect the rear of that lens as well as the front of the lens. Also, you're going to be looking at some pretty nice flip-up caps here that are going to help protect that glass as well. And these flip-up caps are on there. Uh, they're on there pretty good. You can't just simply pop these things off accidentally. I mean, these things are on there pretty good. The, the rear lens, actually, you have to pull this thing off to get that cap off. So uh, the front right here, it's a little bit easier to take off, but still doesn't just come off by pushing on it. You got to, you know, physically choose to take off these lens caps. So they're really nice lens caps. Uh, they fit on there nice and tight. They're not going to pop up by accident either. Now the front actually has a little extra feature, which is going to be a kill flash. So you can see right here, we have a kill flash that is located on front that comes with the patrol. So that's going to add a little bit of extra security when you are are looking at something downrange that is trying to look back at you. So if somebody's looking at you downrange and you have a traditional MRO that has that Ruby coating on it, uh, this has the same coating that you're going to find on the original MRO, but it has that ruby colored coating on it that makes a pretty good reflection downrange. So if the sun's hitting it just right or ambient light is just hitting it just right, you're going to be able to see that flash downrange. Uh, also with the emitter, we're talking about a red dot that's emitting a uh, projection onto the glass and you might be able to see that emitter as well, especially if they're using night vision, right? So if you're using night vision, that emitter is going to glow. Uh, the kill flash is going to help reduce that and this one has a pretty fine kill flash on it as well. It, it is uh, a kill flash that I'd say the honeycomb is definitely a lot a lot tighter than other kill flashes that I've seen on the market so it's got a really nice kill flash on it but one of the downsides to a kill flash is that it's going to reduce the uh, light transmission into the optic itself so you're going to see a little bit more dim uh, but I don't think that's really that big of a deal. It's just a little bit more dim. If you're slightly off, I mean, if you don't have your head directly behind it, it's going to affect it more. But if you have your head directly behind it, you'll look right through that kill flash like it's nothing. Now, I know a lot of people are going to make comparisons between this and, let's say, the Aimpoint Pro. They're both called patrol rifle optics by their prospective companies, but they are definitely different. They fall in the same category. They both project uh, a single red dot. 
Uh, but this one right here is smaller, it's more compact, and it's less bulky than an Aimpoint Pro. An Aimpoint Pro, if you know about the Aimpoint Pro, it's got kind of like a riser mount for a scope. So it kind of holds it the same way that you would hold a scope over its body. And then it has a large knob towards the bottom right here. So a lot like this one, it uses kind of a, what I would again call a semi-quick disconnect mount. The Aimpoint Pro has this really large knob that's located at the bottom of the mount. You would just go ahead and tighten that thing down and kind of ratchet into place. And then it locks itself into place so it's not going anywhere. But it is kind of a large and bulky mount. So this is a, a much smaller, much lighter, and more compact package. And uh, I would say that if I was to choose between the two, I'm going to go with the MRO Patrol out of the two. I think that the Aimpoint Pro is just, it's a little bit big, you know, and it's a little bit bulky for what it is, just a standard uh, red dot. So uh, the other thing I want to mention too is that with the MRO and different models that you can find, there's also different reticles that you can find as well, like a, you know, one MOA dot with a 65 MOA ring. This one right here has a simple two MOA dot. Very easy to use, quick target acquisition, and both eye open shooting. So you're going to hear a lot of people say that, uh, you know, you get a better field of view out of this optic right here because it has the larger objective lens. Uh, and so when you see, you know, you look through it, you get a larger field of view. But if you're shooting with both eyes open anyway, that's not really that much of a difference. Uh, but you do lose that tubular effect that you would with, let's say, like an Aimpoint T1 or, you know, a smaller tubular optic. So when you're shooting with both eyes open, you don't have that tube effect out of the one eye. It does give you that wide wider field of view so when your both eyes are open uh, you're just basically looking down range you just have to superimpose that red dot onto whatever your target is so uh, it's definitely a nice optic and it has a lot of great features and it's a super super tough optic as well I mean these things are uh, it's about as tough as you're gonna get out of a little red dot let's just say that I mean if you were to search the market for a small compact patrol style optic like this and a red dot I'm not sure that you're going to find one that's any tougher than the Trigon MRO Patrol. They're just great optics. So again, if you guys are interested in checking this out, you can always uh, use my discount code or check out my website. You'll find all the discount codes, links, and stuff like that over there so that you can find this stuff uh, easily and save yourself a little bit of money. So again, I want to thank uh, Optics Planet for sending this out. I want to thank the Firearms Policy Coalition for helping to support the channel and for fighting for our Second Amendment rights. Make sure you guys go down there and you click on the link for the USCCA and become a member and get yourself some peace of mind because because again, they will defend you if you have to defend yourself. So definitely worth having. Anyway, I thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and have a great day.